ויאמר אדוני לנוח בו אתה וכל ביתך אל התיבה כי אותך ראיתי צדיק לפניי בדור הזה מכל הבהמה הטהורה תיקף לך שבעה שבעה איש ואשתו ומן הבהמה אשר לא טהורה היא שניים איש ואשתו גם מעוף השמיים שבעה שבעה זכר ונקבה לחיות זרע על פני כל הארץ. Now I'm going to be reading from the English version of the second aliyah of the Torah portion Noach. from Rabbi Arya Kaplan's The Living Torah. Starting in verse, uh, chapter 7, verse 1, it says, God said to Noah, come into the ark, you and your family. I have seen that you are righteous before me in this generation. Take seven pairs of every clean animal, each consisting of a male and its mate. Of every animal that is not clean, take two, a male and its mate. Of the birds of the heaven also take seven pairs, each consisting of a male and its mate. Let them keep seed alive on the face of all the earth, because in another seven days I will bring rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights. I will obliterate every organism that I have made from the face of the earth. Noah did all that God had commanded. Noah was six hundred years old when the flood occurred. Water was on the earth. Noah, along with his sons, his wife, and his sons' wives, came into the ark ahead of the waters of the flood. The clean animals, the animals which were not clean, the birds, and all that walked the earth, came two by two to Noah, to the ark. They were male and female, as God had commanded Noah. Seven days passed, and the flood waters were on the earth. It was in the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th of the month. On that day, all the wellsprings of the great deep burst forth, and the floodgates of the heavens were opened. It would continue to rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. On that very day, Noah boarded the ark along with his sons, Shem, Ham, and Yepheth. Noah's wife and the three wives of his sons were with them. They came along with every separate kind of beast, every separate kind of livestock, every separate kind of land animal, and every separate kind of flying creature, every bird and every winged animal, of all flesh that has in it the breath of life. They came to Noah, to the ark, two by two. Those who came were male and female. Of all flesh they came, as God had commanded Noah. God then sealed him inside. So there are various Jewish legends or Midrashim based on this story. One of them, um, I think it's in the Midrash Abba, but I'm not sure. It says that God destroyed the world because uh, men were, were marrying other men and giving them marriage contracts. Another Midrash um, that I read from Rabbi Nachman's um, commentary on the Torah was that was because um, men were spilling seed, meaning they were um, basically ejaculating, but in a way that could not impregnate a woman. So those are both very interesting um, ideas, which are not directly found in Torah, but in Judaism, they're, they're, they're both um, considered wrong. Um, Whatever it was, uh, we know that God honored the, those and preserved those who followed his ways and walked in his ways. And God destroyed people who did not. And 
both of those midrashim point to sexual sin in particular of why God destroyed the world. And it's interesting because, you know, also the prophets, when the prophets came to rebuke Israel, um, the prophets did not rebuke Israel for any of the ceremonial laws, but more for the moral laws. Um, actually, they, Israel was rebuked for keeping ceremonial um, laws, yet neglecting the moral ones. So how can we tell whether something is moral or ceremonial? I think from Rambam, um, it's, 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 it makes a lot of sense. Um, he talks about how um, a moral law is something that can be deduced by logic by anyone in any nation. So don't steal, don't commit adultery. These things you don't have to believe in God to understand or to come up with. When it comes to, you know, um, don't eat unclean meat, um, worship on Shabbat, these are more ceremonial. You don't understand. How do we know that Shabbat is the correct day? You know, we only know that because of revelation, because of tradition, because of collective memory by the Jewish people when Shabbat is. How do we know which are deemed clean and unclean by God? I mean, we can use logic, but sometimes, you know, that can fail us. And also, sometimes we know things only because of advanced science, but these are things that were not necessarily known. You know, we, you know, a lot of uh, scientists today will say that, you know, pork is unhealthy, shrimp is unhealthy, oysters unhealthy, but that wasn't necessarily known, you know, thousands of years ago. This was made known by divine revelation. And also science is always changing on that. You know, later on, pork was known to be the other white meat that was actually healthy. You know, we don't know. Science is always changing. So I think this is a, um, this is, um, a good way to understand what is moral and what, what is ceremonial. And that doesn't mean to say that ceremonial laws are not important. Um, on the contrary, we know when someone is spiritual, when they look beyond more than just the moral laws. Because when it comes to the moral laws, even an atheist can understand stealing is bad. But to be spiritual, you have to have faith and trust in divine revelation. You have to have faith and trust in the word of God being correct and true, even if it doesn't make sense. That is what it means to be spiritual. So now let's get into the Hebrew for this passage. So it says, Vayomer, which means, and he said. Um, this is yod heh Hashem, the divine name, yod heh which speaks of God's eternal nature. Le Noah, le means to, and Noah is Noah. Okay, and the root of that word has to do with um, the word for comfort. And then we have um, bo, which means come. And then here it says ata, which means you. And this is vechol, meaning and all. And beitcha, beitcha means your house. Bait is house, and the cha part means your. So your, enti your entire household. El means two. This la right here is an abbreviated form of this word right here, el, two. Okay, lenoach, el. And this is hateva. Hateva means the ark. Ha means two, uh, the. And teva is ark. And then we have ki otcha, ki means for or because, otcha is you, the cha part means you, this et is um, part of the direct object pointer. Ra'iti means I have seen, perfect tense or past tense here, and first person, I. Tzadik means righteous, um, and then from this word also, that tzaddik, we get the word um, tzedek, which means justice. And we get tzedakah, um, which is um, how we call charity, like giving to the poor, tzedakah. And then we have here lefanai, which means before me or literally to my face. Okay, panim is face. Um, Pane is 
face of, panai is my face, okay? Le means to. So this is literally like to my face, but this is how you, we say before me in Hebrew. Bador means in the generation. Haze means this. So something that I'd like to point out about this specific verse is that Hashem says, come, come. He doesn't say go to the ark. He says, come to the ark. So Hashem is about to bring calamity to the whole entire world. And he's not telling Noah to go somewhere for safety. He's saying to Noah, come to me where I'm going to be at. Come to me and I will make you safe. And we can, we can see that that's how God wants to keep us safe in our world today with all the turmoil and all the chaos that's going on. Our safety lies in coming to God and finding refuge and shelter in him. Next verse, mikol. Mikol means out of all. Mi is from and kol is all. From or out of. Mm, there's different ways to translate this. Mikol, out of all, from all. Habehema. Uh, this specifically refers to herd animals like cattle. Any kind of animal that um, that groups into herds. Okay, behema. So this is actually singular form. But this is the way to um, to say to talk about something in general, right? So anything that is a herd animal, okay? And the ha part means the. And then we have here ha tehor ha This is literally the pure, okay? Pure. Sometimes it's translated as clean, but it's better translated as pure. Um, so this is feminine. Both of these are fem in feminine form because in Hebrew, behema, um, the idea of, you know, a herd animal is a feminine one. Okay? Actually, even, even other kinds of animals, um, chaya, that's um, it's also feminine form, even if you're talking about a, um, a male of that, of that um, animal, the general term for it is female nature. Atehara means pure or clean. Um, tikach, you will take. So that means, okay, the kach part is the root, the t part right here. This means you, okay. Lecha is for yourself. Le means two or four, and cha means you or yourself. Shiva means seven. It's the feminine way to say seven. Um, sheva is the other way, okay. So shiva, shiva. They're the, both the same words. It says seven, seven, seven of seven, literally, but this, with this, means in Hebrew, um, even today, is it means seven by seven, okay, meaning seven pairs, okay, seven pairs, ish ve'ishto, so actually, sorry, shiva, shiva, seven of, seven of each, it means seven of each, okay, and then it says ish ve'ishto, this is how we know it means pairs, um, because it's the male and his female, okay, and then umin, means and from. Habehema, again, is the, the herd animals. Now, I think it's very interesting. Growing up as a child, whenever I saw the cartoons, they would always only show two of each animal. But here, it's actually seven pairs, okay? It's seven pairs of each animal. Asher means that. Lo means not. Um, tehora, um, pure. So, now we're going into the pure or clean animals, okay? He means she, and it's using the feminine because again, as I said before, an animal um, that is not, even if it's not clean, um, it's, it's feminine. And then it says shenaim means two, two, shenaim ish veishto. Oh, actually this means Shnaim. Shnaim is two pairs. Okay, so it didn't say it the same way here. Um, it, it's this, this one says two pairs. Shnaim is the way to say um, two pairs in Hebrew. Instead of saying um, sheni, sheni, it's shnaim here. 
Um, then it says ish ve ishto. So this is male and his female. Um, so in in um, in Judaism, so we believe that there are seven pairs of clean animals as well as two pairs of unclean animals. And so the question is why? Why were there seven of the clean or pure animals? And the simple answer is that um, because Noah was um, going to offer sacrifices and God, I mean, there were sacrifices ever since, you know, Cain and Abel at least, right? Um, so Noah was supposed to offer sacrifices and he could only sacrifice an animal to Hashem if it was a pure or clean animal, not an unclean or unpure animal. So um, some say that that Noah did not have to follow kashrut laws, so he could eat unclean meat. But I, there is, I, there, you know, that's that is debatable because we already know here that there's a distinction between clean and unclean. Now, um, there was no meat eating at all yet at this point, not till after the ark. Um, after after they got off the ark, did God say they could they could eat animals? And even though it does say you can eat any animal, there was still a distinction between the clean and unclean. Um, for me, it's like you know, if I tell someone, oh, you can eat, you can go ahead and eat anything in my kitchen. Well, I don't mean, you know, the soap when I say that, you know, but I, I'm just giving a blanket statement in general, like, yeah, sure, go ahead, eat whatever is there in my kitchen. That doesn't mean that, you know every single thing in my kitchen is edible. You know what I'm saying? Because Noah here had already known which ones were clean and which ones were unclean. So, you know, did they eat unclean meat um, before the Torah? Possibly, it's very possible. Oh, excuse me. Did they refrain from eating unclean meat before the Torah, before the giving of the Torah at Mount Sinai? It's possible. It's also possible that they did eat unclean meat and they were allowed to eat unclean meat. I'm not sure, but we at least know that there was some kind of teaching, that there was a form of Torah, because there's no there's no mention here in in the uh, up in the Torah up up to this point which animals are clean and which ones are unclean. So there's an unspoken or at least an unwritten Torah that we don't yet know about, but it's um it's referenced, right? So the Kabbalistic belief is that the Torah was given, you know, even to Adam and Eve. Maybe not the same exact Torah that was given at Sinai, but a form of it, its principles, at least. Okay, and this is the last verse we'll review. Gum means also. Me'of means from the flying creatures. Bird is tsipor, but of is something that flies, okay? And so it can, it, it can, it can be more inclusive than just, um, than just birds. So anything that flies, it could include bats, it could include, um, uh, you know, flying lizards, flying bugs, um, even, Flying mammals, you know, if there were any. So oh, from the flying creatures, Hashemayim, the heaven. So the flying creatures is implied of here from the flying creatures of the heaven. Um, Shiva, seven, Shiva, seven of each. Zachar, male, unekeva, un, and female. So again, according to um, Judaism, this indicates. Uh, this is a pair, male and female, seven pairs, okay? Lechayot, to, to preserve life, basically, is lechayot, le is two, chayot would, would be preserve life here. Zera is seed, okay? It can also be translated as offspring. Al means upon, and pene is the face of, or the surface of, Chol is the entire or all. Ha'aretz is the earth or the land. Would you like to become the healer of your home and your community and create a profitable online health coaching business? 
Are you interested in becoming a health coach, a naturopath, an herbalist, or a nutritionist? Do you need help finding the right program for studying holistic health and healing? Or perhaps you already have certification, but you're still not confident enough in healing people and don't know how to build a business that will empower you to have an impact and allow you to leave your regular day job. Are you ready to get a deep and comprehensive picture of holistic health and healing and learn from top healers in our day so that you can stop being stuck in a job or a career you don't have a passion for? Heal yourself and others without the need for pharmaceutical drugs with harmful side effects, doctors, or even dentists. Become more knowledgeable about holistic health and healing than most medical doctors who have graduated from medical school without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and years of time in expensive medical schools or programs. Build a health coaching business that will allow you to work from home and achieve time, location, and financial freedom. Aruka.com empowers people to become the healers of their home and their community by equipping them with naturopathic herbalism, health coaching, and online business and marketing skills. My name is Maim. I'm 42 years old and a homeschool mom of seven beautiful children. These two in the photo are my October babies. I became a naturopathic herbalist and health coach in order to take charge of my family's health when the modern medical system kept failing us. We were spending thousands of dollars on insurance and other medical expenses, but they did not have any answers for our health problems. Working from home has been such a blessing for us. I used to work at the NASA Ames Research Center as a computer scientist slash engineer, but being able to have an online business has enabled me to surpass my income at NASA and to be there for my family, homeschool them, take care of them, watch them grow up every step of the way for 18 years now. I started Aruka.com in 2009 to help people become healthy, and heal themselves. I've coached all sorts of people and eventually even medical doctors and nurses started coming to me repeatedly for help for various health issues for themselves or their loved ones. I help people heal themselves of serious diseases such as cancer, heart disease, and high blood pressure, diabetes, as well as other common issues such as hormone imbalances, abnormal bleeding, migraines, eczema, kidney stones, gallstones, cataracts, and even urinary tract infection. Various people began asking me to start teaching what I know about holistic health and healing, including two medical doctors who have become very good friends of mine. When I realized that there was such a demand for the knowledge I have that even medical doctors were telling me to teach, I shifted the focus of Aruka.com. And now we teach people how to become confident healers through our naturopathic herbalist and health coach certification program. We help people become healers of their home and community and create profitable online health coaching businesses. If you're interested in becoming a holistic healer, please visit our website, aruka.com, A-R-U-K-A-H.com. Again, that's A-R-U-K-A-H.com. Hope to see you there.